I'm honestly rooting for the cannon at this point. And I don't know which camera to look at when I say that. Oh! Alright, so we are back with another comparison between the Canon R5 and the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark III. It's a follow-up to this video I did right here, and in that video I compared the... Uh, I still, I don't want to point at one or the other, so I'm going to point right in the middle. I reviewed the uh, Canon R5 with several different lenses against the Olympus EM1 Mark III, and the EM1 Mark III blew it away. It won by far. Um, but I got a couple of comments that maybe realize that this is worth another test. So one of the comments was that I wasn't comparing a fair lens. So on the Olympus, I still have the 17 millimeter 1.2. And on the Canon, I now have the Canon RF 35 millimeter 1.8 so this is a much more fair comparison this is a lens that the r5 whichever one is the r5 i'm not telling you yet it's a native rf lens it's a very similar field of view to the olympus 17 and it should be really really close to similar it's it's one of the best lenses canon makes for this focal length so it should work and it's a funny thing that we're even comparing these two cameras one of these cameras is the creation of a company who is known as a sleeping giant in the camera industry in 2016 they released the uh, 5D Mark IV DSLR, and it was regarded as one of the best cameras ever made. But since then, this giant empire that is Canon seemed to get knocked down by some barbarians known as the Sony cameras. The uh, A7 Mark III came out and pretty much made that Canon 5D Mark IV irrelevant in terms of the IBIS and the frames per second and the autofocus and the reliability and all of those things. And then Sony kept making these amazing cameras and Canon fell behind. And then they released the RP and the Canon R, which were okay, but they were the first mirrorless cameras, which were incredibly crippled. They had that 1.7 times crop in 4K. They had no IBIS. There was all kinds of issues. So Canon was this sleeping giant and they finally produced the best camera they could, the R5 which on paper is amazing and in using it, it is amazing. But for what I'm doing here, just talking in my kitchen to some cameras, is the R5 worth it? Or is this little tiny, like solo ninja of a camera who doesn't even have an army or an empire. He's small, but he's quick and he's tricky. The Olympus. Is the Olympus a better camera in this environment than the R5? Well, we are seeing it right now. You on this side are the Canon and you on this side are the Olympus. So I've done what I could to decripple the Canon. I know I kind of didn't use the very best settings and I wasn't shooting in log last time. So now on both cameras, we're shooting in 4K, 24 frames per second log. So it's on log over here on the Olympus and it's C-Log over here on the Canon. On the Canon, I'm shooting in 4K HQ and yes, yeah, C-Log. So I think it's all I, yes, all I, C-Log, 4K HQ. And as far as the autofocus, I've set the sensitivity and the speed to zero on both of them. So we can grab our autofocus test friend and see what sort of difference there is now. Does one snap back to my face quicker? Does one snap to the kitty quicker? Uh, which is more pleasing as far as the focus pulling? I think this is enough talking inside and you guys have had about five minutes to compare the quality of these two cameras. What do you think so far, just sitting in my kitchen, making these goofy little videos, what looks better, what looks cleaner, which one's nicer? And now we're gonna go outside. 
The first thing I wanted to test out was the slow motion feature on both of these cameras. So we went to the backyard bird feeder area for some intense slow-mo finch action. So you can see a bit of how both of the cameras perform outside in slow-mo. It seems like the Canon handled the shadows a little bit better, especially when it got darker and started to snow, as you can see in the background. The Olympus seemed to struggle when the light was limited. There's the Olympus. It still looks nice, but there's a lot of noise in the shadows and the blacks are definitely kind of crushed. I probably could have raised the ISO some to overexpose the log footage, but But we can still see what the cameras were doing on kind of a lot of automatic settings. It seems like the Olympus needs a little help to overexpose. Next, I wanted to get some more daylight shots and some more like realistic walking around uh, video clips. So we went down to our local river and I was shooting both of these cameras on a neutral and a flat profile. And you can really see the difference that the lens stabilization makes with that 35 1.8 lens on the Canon. The Olympus does a good job and I was walking kind of sloppy, but having that lens and IBIS stabilization really, really makes a difference. It's almost like you have a gimbal with the Canon. So this is the Blue River right below the Dillon Dam Reservoir, and it's some serious gold metal trout fishing waters. You can see they're swimming every, they're everywhere. We saw like 30 trout right underneath this bridge. So I wanted to get some video of the water and kind of show the dynamic range difference between the cameras. And then I'm gonna get some video of some fishermen coming up pretty soon. So this fisher woman was nice enough to let me uh, record her doing her thing out there in the water. And I was fortunate enough to start recording at the exact right moment. I only shot one clip of this woman fishing and it was definitely the right time to, to walk down to her. A few things that I'm noticing just looking at these videos side by side is the Olympus does look really, really nice. I mean, it's sharp, it's clear, it's vibrant, but there's just something about the video that the Canon's producing. The full frame sensor really makes an obvious difference here. I shot both of these at f4. Now I could have helped the Olympus out and maybe open that aperture up by a stop or two, but I wanted to give a realistic comparison. Both of these cameras it, as close to the same settings as I can get them, what the difference is in the image quality. And you can see the difference in the dynamic range in the Canon. The shadow to highlight roll off is a lot smoother and it feels more natural, like you're actually standing there in the water. Where the Olympus looks like a really nice video, but there's a little bit of a separation between the viewer and the video where the uh, Canon image just seems to bring you into it a little bit nicer. And I do think it is because of that full frame, that little bit of subject separation you get, even at F4, which is relatively stopped down, makes a big difference. You can just feel the action a little bit nicer. And another thing I'm noticing is that the colors on the Canon seem to come out a bit nicer also. Uh, the blue sky, as you can see there, is a lot more natural on the Canon side. It's what the Colorado sky looks like, and the Olympus kind of put a kind of an odd cast on that color. And then also you can see the Olympus has added some like kind of vibrant and overly saturated colors to the water. But overall, I'd be very happy with either of these clips.
right guys, so just before wrapping this video up, I wanted to let you know I am going to be concluding things just on one camera. I'm shooting this camera on a different picture setting, not a log or a flat or a neutral, anything like that. And I've turned off my lights and I'm just going with some window lighting right now. But this should be a decent test. Can you tell right away which camera this is, which lens this is? Uh, leave a comment, please, down below. What camera am I shooting this outro on? And I wanted to let you guys know that I just signed up with a Buy Me A Coffee account. So if you have enjoyed these videos and especially like the ones I do for Move Shoot Move uh, more specifically, if you want to support, uh, I do enjoy your likes, your comments, your thumbs ups, your subscriptions that you've made already. But if you want to show even a little bit more support, you can head on over to the link that is down below and buy me a coffee. Any little donation would be super awesome. So thank you guys. Uh, my thoughts on the video so far, you could definitely see a difference and the funny thing is i think i like the olympus video better in the studio but once we got outside there was definitely some situations where the canon shined but let me know what you guys think what is the difference and keep in mind we are comparing such different levels of cameras the r5 should look way way better considering the price point considering the fact that it's a full frame camera like all of these things should mean that it is producing a better image. Just the fact that we can even compare the two cameras is a big thumbs up for the Olympus. So and it's just kind of a funny thing. I'm not sure which camera I enjoy shooting with more. The Olympus just kind of feels better. The It feels better in your hands. The metal feels good. The buttons feel good. It is just a nice, well-built camera and it is really, really weatherproof. So if I were to go out in a some harsh conditions, like if we went up and photographed those bears in Wyoming again and it was snowing super hard, I might lean towards the Olympus just for that. Now the Canon is properly weather sealed, but just not as good. There's something about that Olympus that just gives me some more confidence. So I think I'll wrap things up here now. Let me know what you guys think, which camera's better and again, is there anything that I could tweak about either of these cameras to make them look a little bit sharper? Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And it's a just past the blood supermoon, but the stars will be out soon. And I'll see you there.